I think we're looking forward to opening up uh, within a year. Hopefully about May, May, June, hopefully a little earlier. It depends on the end of the construction projects. Construction of the new Compass by Margaritaville Hotel in Flagler Beach is moving along. Owner Minaj Bula says construction, which began last September, is on schedule. Right now, we don't anticipate any issues. We've got some small, typical construction things, but we're working right through them. Bula says the city of Flagler Beach has been a good partner on the project. Yeah, they've been very supportive, and we're working through you know, any small issues that both of us have. Some on social media have criticized the 100-room hotel, calling it an eyesore. Social media is not to be given as a truth, right? It's it's the people that uh, can't say and come out and, and speak on their own, so I, we don't really pay attention to that. Bula says construction should be complete and the hotel open to the public by next summer. Good morning, Flagler County. I'm Rich Carroll. You're listening to Flagler's Morning News on Friday, June 7th. The city of Palm Coast is proud to announce that Mayor David Alphen has been unanimously elected as the first vice chair treasurer of the River to Sea Transportation Planning Organization, TPO, for the upcoming fiscal year, beginning on July 1st. This prestigious position marks a significant step in regional transportation, leadership, and planning. The Transportation Planning Organization is the governmental agency that prioritizes DOT projects. In addition to Mayor Alphen's election, the TPO has approved a crucial reapportionment plan that extends the TPO's membership to include all of Flagler County. This expansion reflects the growing importance of Flagler County within the regional transportation framework and ensures comprehensive representation in future planning initiatives. I will make sure that our Flagler County and, of course, Palm Coast always get their fair share of funding and projects in the Department of Transportation uh, work plan. I'm very pleased to be a uh, part of it and hope we can do lots of good for our infrastructure, our roads, and our community here at home. The River to Sea Transportation Planning Organization is responsible for planning and coordinating transportation projects and funding within Volusia and Flagler counties. For Flagler's Local Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota US-1 St. Augustine, here to wow you. Israel has to destroy Hamas militarily, and we need to let them do that. The war in Gaza continues. Congressman Mike Waltz, who represents Flagler County, is sharing his thoughts on where the conflict goes from here. Congressman Waltz says a robust energy policy here in the U.S. would help Israel end its conflict with militants in Gaza. At the end of the day, Iran is behind all of this. Iran is behind Hamas, is behind Hezbollah, is providing them the money, the training, the resources. How does Iran afford to do that? Well, the high price of oil. With oil trading at 75 to $80 per barrel, Walt says bringing global oil prices down would eventually cripple Iran's ability to wage its proxy war with Israel. If we would simply flood the world with cheap and clean American oil and gas, you drive down the global price of oil, uh, and you put Iran on their back foot economically. And below about $55 a barrel, they start to go into economic survival mode, and they wouldn't have the cash to fund the war in Gaza and to fund Hamas. Walt says it would have the same impact on the war in Ukraine. You could literally kill two birds with one stone, put two of our enemies on the back foot, but it is Biden's out-of-control climate agenda that has us tapping the brakes on American energy Meanwhile, the demand is still there, so the price stays high, and people are buying just as much Iranian and Russian oil and gas as they ever were. Why aren't they buying American oil and gas and not theirs? Here at home, Waltz points out drilling and fracking would also drive down gasoline prices in the U.S., eventually tamping down inflation. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Daryl Moody. How does a new tax collector get her job? And newly married at that. Suzanne Johnston said she knew nothing of marriage then, including that people worked jobs after they got married. She said that she was waiting in a car for Albert, who'd gone into the grocery store at Flagler Beach, and a man came up to the car and knocked on the window. So she rolled it down. And he said, when are you going to come to work? 
I said, I'm sorry, sir, I don't know who you are. He said, my name is Don Moore, the tax assessor, and Albert said when you got back from your honeymoon, you'd come to work. She says, well, I guess I'll be there Monday. That's how Suzanne Johnston got her job in the tax collector's office about five decades ago. Business Minds Coffee Chat with host Jay Shears on WNZF, Saturday mornings at 8.30 and on the Flagler Radio app. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. What can you do with the family in Flagler County this weekend? This is Stacy with Fun for Augie Kids. Come out to the Flagler Beach First Friday event. You are invited to join in for a night of family fun, live music, dancing, food vendors, arts and crafts, and more. The best dog event of the year is back for the third time. Hang 8 Dog Surfing Extravaganza. There will be a dog surfing contest, dog costume contest, dog open surf sessions, a dog kissing booth, vendors, and more at this family-friendly event. For more on these events and others, please visit us on our website at fun, the number four, augiekids.com. Have a great weekend. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll. And now, Mike Lee Show with your WNZF local sports update. Flagler County cleaned house at the Volusia Flagler Sports Awards Tuesday night. Five county athletes were selected player of the year by the News Journal in their respective sports. Braff PC, bowler Emma Bazzullo, here describing the moment she completed a 300 game this season. I couldn't believe it. I started crying. My team came and surrounded me. It was just the best feeling in the world. The cross country winner was Braden Warmack, who had high hopes for state. I'm just going to go out there and do what I've been doing all season, put together a solid race. His top 10 finish was first among juniors. Finally, wrestling's Nina Borgman, a 2024 state champion who has her sights set much higher. To be number one in the state of Florida, that's just Florida, but there's 50 states in the country. I want to be number one in the world. For Matanzas, golfer Alexandra Gazzoli finished in the top four at state for the third straight year. Her college career begins this summer at Florida State. I grew up a fan, so I do have a big emotional attachment. Jordan Mills was all area in football and wrestling and a regional finalist in track. His perfect season and state title on the mats earned him Wrestler of the Year. His total resume cemented him as the overall Boys Athlete of the Year. Jordan and his sister Mariah became the first brother-sister pair to win wrestling titles in the same season. Uh, I knew we had to get it done this time. It meant so much after I won that we both won together and made history, and it was very special for me. The Florida Dairy Farmers Association honored FPC runner Jack Gilberry as part of the first team all-academic, all-state athletic team this week. The FHSAA held their summer board of directors meeting Tuesday, voting 12 to 1 to allow high school athletes to profit off of name, image, and likeness. What does this mean for high school athletics in Flagler County and beyond? Josh Wilson from FloridaHighSchoolFootball.com joins us on the Rich and Mike Sports Show tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. right here on WNCF and anytime on the Flagler Radio app. We're your home for local sports with updates Mondays and Fridays. From the Sports Desk, I'm Mike Lucio.